Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Yep, you're looking at my cabinets. Oh, before I forget, today is April 7th. No, it's May 7th. Oh my God, I went back in time. It was a time warp. Now, oh, it's May 7th, 2020. And uh, this is what I did first thing this morning, right after breakfast. Built some cabinets. And uh, yeah, I got them hung up in here, and I already put in my uh, laundry detergent to check the height of the, the shelving and all of that. And I noticed that I made the shelving so that it's adjustable. It's got adjustable height. See, the holes drilled it on both sides. And um, I usually have some of the pins that hold those shelves up, but uh, I couldn't find any. So I just used some uh, number 10 by 3 quarter hex head um, screws that I had in, in a box and uh, they seem to work out just fine and um, I'm going to show you how I uh, drill those holes to make the shelves adjustable now the only thing I didn't do uh, was the shell they, the shelves come as a um, pre-laminated shelving unit and they're like 8 foot long and 16 inches deep and all of that so I just bought two of those and I cut them down to size to make the shelves I needed and I could make extra shelves if I want but I think my spacing is good this side is going to be for um, laundry detergent and household things like uh, WD-40 some denatured alcohol and things like that that uh, um, you just need to do maintenance around the house so down at the bottom here, I'll have all my cleaning supplies and that stuff. Now I got doors, I'll show you in a little while. I got doors that are going to go on these also. And then this side is going to be a linen closet. So I'm going to have like my towels and stuff on the, on the bottom here. Then I'll have extra sheets and pillowcases and that stuff on the next shelf up. And then all the way at the top, I'll have stuff that I don't need to grab all the time like... Uh, I'm uh, only going to pull them out in the winter time, like uh, flannel sheets or something like that. Uh, uh, all the way at the top, it'll, I won't have to get up there all the time. Now, of course, I did buy a, a little uh, two, two step step stool here. And uh, I have that step stool ready to go so I can get up and get into the uh, high upper ends of the cabinet. Um, I got a tarp on here because I was spray painting these cabinets with a uh, HVLP and for those of you who don't know what HVLP is that's high volume low pressure um, it, it's like a reverse vacuum cleaner that powers a spray gun so you get like 90% transfer of paint there's very little loss and you can see there's just a few specks on the wall there um, that that's the total overspray from spraying on it this, this thing all um, well, this has right now two coats on it. Uh, it'll get a final coat after a scuff sanding in the morning when this is really uh, baked on and hardened. So anyway, um, that shelf item that I had on there worked great. I, I cut a couple of pieces, measured my cabinet. I figured I'm going to need an inch and a quarter spacers. So I made a couple of inch and a quarter spacers and I... Um, put the cabinet up there and lifted one side, slid a spacer under, lifted the other side, slid a spacer under. And then I put my shoe, that's that, that's what they call that trim molding around the edge. I put my shoe on there to fill in the extra gaps that were around the edge. So it's all trimmed in nice and neat to the walls. And yes, there is a light that goes there with a pull string. And uh, it might be slightly in the way, but these cabinet doors... They'll open 90 degrees without hitting the uh, the light bulb, so I should be okay with it. And, uh, and there's, like I said, there's nothing going to be major up in there, so uh, it'll be just uh, basically getting some storage area to get rid of some of the stuff that's on the floors. So anyway, let's head on out, and uh, we'll we'll go out to the. Uh, garage because i have it set up for a workshop right now i can't back my van in and get it out of the sun but the uh, temperatures they said today was supposed to reach 106 uh that was last week what they said when they said that uh i did make it to 96 10 degrees below what they said all right so i got my big table saw out here 
This uh, this is really heavy. It's got a cast iron table on it, but this thing is smooth as silk when it, when cutting cabinetry. Um, the the special blade I have on here is designed for cutting um, uh, wood for cabinetry, and he, if you can look, you see that they're they're sloped chisels in each direction. So they they actually take a really super fine cut. And the cut is so smooth when you go through wood with that, that uh, you, you'll swear somebody sanded it to a finish. It's, it, that's how smooth it comes out. Spent a lot of money on that blade, but it's well worth it when you're doing stuff like this. And I like this table saw because um, it'll go all the way out to 36 inches. Um, and that I, made, I made that little table there as a catch table, so when I was running the large sheets through, they would land on that catch table and uh, I wouldn't have to worry about it binding in the blade and kicking back on me, things like that. So I did use MDF, three quarter inch MDF to build the cabinets. And uh, I've done that before. It, uh, if you're doing paint grade, you can't beat it because it's this stuff is nice and smooth to start with. So it gives you a nice quality on the paint. All right, so here's the doors. Now. I got two um, that are narrower, just slightly narrower than the other two. And as you were, I was showing you the cabinets on the side, the ones on the left are these two doors right here, and the ones on the right are these two doors, so, because this is where I'm going to be hold, having like uh, um, the bed linens and things like that. So I wanted a little more space to get in there. Um, just for uh, laundry, uh, soaps, and cleaning stuff, this is all I need was these. So I did get the uh, first coat of paint on these, uh, this paint with primer, and uh, they need to be um, sanded before the next coat goes on tomorrow. So I've got other things I've got to do tomorrow. So what I'll do is I'll come out early and I'll sand these down, give them the, give them the scuff sand they need, and then I'll get fire up my HVLP sprayer, that's it right down there, and uh, this is the gun that attaches to it. And uh, here, say right there, HVLP. So, anyway, um, what's nice about these is the tip on this, when you got it on a slant, it sprays a round pattern. When you got it up and down, it, it's, it goes, does a horizontal pattern. And when you got it vertical, no, when, it, when it's vertical, it does, does a horizontal pattern. And when it's horizontal, it does a vertical pattern. The opposites of what you might think it was. But, um, yeah, pretty nice little uh, unit. I've had this for years. It's a um, Chicago Electric Harbor Freight. And when I was in the business, in construction business, I had four sets of these things because uh, we used them a lot. And uh, we'd have one on one job site and another on another, another job site. We'd build uh, kitchen cabinets and uh, things like that or go on to another job site and have a but in, installing a bunch of doors, interior doors, and have to paint them all, um, custom building cabinets for bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. So we're always using them and uh, just great. And I got this uh, Krylon uh, White Gloss Max Ultimate Coverage. Um, this is really good stuff. It's acrylic latex for indoor, outdoor. And this is what I use on the uh, cabinets. So it'll give me a nice uh, finish when I'm done. Now there's no need to make these things super pretty, pretty, pretty because they're going to be in a laundry room and there's going to be down the line, there's going to be sliding doors like giant closet doors that close off the whole laundry room and these things will be behind it. So it'll j I'll just make them look really nice, but not uh, perfect. I'm not going to spend that much time on them. Um, that's why I did this uh, this simple design on the edges instead of doing a race panel look. And normally I could take a router bit and I put a jig around here and then I would cut a, a groove all the way around the inside like that so it looked like a fake raised panel door. And I could do that, but like I said, it's laundry. No need for it, right? All right. So... That being said, let's head on outside. Oh, I was going nuts today. I went down and 
uh, watered my garden because of the uh, dry heat. And uh, somewhere, I, my uh, roll of green plastic tie-up tape, the ones I use to tie the plants up to st uh, the sticks, like the tomatoes and stuff like that, the roll disappeared. And I, I walked around the garden house probably three times and I couldn't find it. And I just can't figure out what the heck happened to it. So I'll go in and do, do another complete search uh, tomorrow, maybe, and see if I can find it. All right. So the other thing I've got to do is you got, I've been using uh, a lot of water to keep the garden soaked down. I've got to transfer some water into my totes down here. And uh, all those yellow buckets are full. And that blue barrel is full. So I'm going to transfer all of those into those two right there. Because that's where I, I use my garden hose hand water. Now that one over there is uh, connected to the overhead sprinklers. So the blue barrels that are up by my uh, water tank. The ones, that, the ones I added on around the outer edge. Those are all full. And I'll transfer water from those. They, that's a total of 800 and... Uh, 74 gallons or something like that and um, these are only 255 gallons or something like that each or 275 gallons each so um, I can transfer um, one fourth of the water from up there and refill that uh, that one and that'll give me plenty of water to go for a while because when I call in for the next water delivery which will probably be somewhere in June or July um, because my, my main water tank is still just under half full. So I got uh, a 2,500 gallon tank under half full. It's, uh, I say 1,200 gallons in there, 1,100 gallons. So that'll that'll last me for a while yet. And I've still got the uh, these barrels and the, these four on the corners here. That's all irrigation water. I can transfer that down here and use that to water the garden for a while. But I, I want all of the big totes emptied when the next water run comes because um, he'll fill up my big main tank, the blue barrels that are up there, and then he comes down here with the truck and he fills all these totes up. So I try to take every bit of the water I paid for in the delivery um, so there's no waste. All right, that's about all I, I can say for now. Oh yeah, by the way, those blue barrels there, you never tell how much is in there. I usually have a stick that I stick in there with markings on it to tell me how, how much water is in there. Somebody mentioned about putting a piece of tape on the totes and painting them so that you can have a clear area where you want to see how much water is in there. Well, on the blue barrels, I can't do that. So maybe I should just drill holes about every inch down the side of it. And then when the water stops leaking out of one of the holes, I know the water is below that. Uh, okay, the puns were funnier, huh? All right, <laughs> that's all I wanted to say uh, as I'm heading back up here. I want to uh, mention one last thing. Uh, when you go down to the comment section afterwards and uh, after you've watched the video and uh, read some of the comments that the other people put on there and uh, give them a thumbs up. And uh, when you do that, they get notified that uh, you like their comment. And then if you have a channel of your own, they see that and they say, huh, I wonder who this guy is. And they go check your channel out. And if you have a good channel, they subscribe. So you add up your subscribers that way. That's a, a nice little uh, thing to do. And a lot of the people put comments down there and they have good things to add. So uh, you might learn a few extra things that you haven't learned on my channel. Uh, you'll learn them in the comment section, which is still my channel. Cool. All right. Time to get out to the exercise area before I sit down and call this one a day. G-Bear, signing off.